Hey there folks and welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB or Chris and today I'm going to be using the Edwin Jagger. This is the 316 razor which was uh, kindly sent to me by Jimmy from uh, NYC Wet Shaving and this is not your standard Edwin Jagger DE89. This one has a stainless steel head and there might be some other parts of it that are stainless but this middle, the mid part of the handle is aluminum. Very, very handsome razor. I've only used this razor once, and I used it during a live shave. Uh, the day I got it, in fact. I did sort of an unboxing. Anyway, it's got some nice posts. We're gonna be using a feather blade today, which actually went very well in the first shave I used with this razor. Again, this is only my second time, so we're gonna use it and see how it goes. Very, very handsome. I love blue stuff, <laughs> generally. And so this is a really, for my money, a very handsome offering. Feels good in the hand. Um, obviously, it's more weighty due to that. I think it's 316 stainless on the head at least. Um, very, very nice razor. Was really smooth the first time. We're also going to be, going to be using uh, Katie's Bubbles Le Marche du Rissage, which is a nice, for my money, one of the best aqua type scents. It's got a couple of types of aquatic scents. And I believe it's resting on some sort of oak moss or something. Is that what it says on there? I don't know. It doesn't say on there, but this is one of my favorite scents, really. Um, I've always loved this soap since the day I got it. Uh, it's it's uh, not bad in price. It's $14 for four ounces or $3.50 uh, per ounce, which is not bad. Now, this one is old. It's back in the days when we used to get eight ounces of soap for 20 bucks. Now it's four ounces for... 14, so you know the prices went up. Uh, the quality, I guess, you could argue has gone up as well. Um, but mine's old, but you'll see it works just fine. I'm gonna do a little misting here, the old sea mister, inspired by Glenn Helly, and we're gonna use our Razor Rock cube, or actually, it's called uh, just a lime cube. Anyway, just trying to kill this thing really because. Uh, <laughs> it won't die. We're going to have a good shave today because yesterday, quite frankly, with that silly naked armor brush, uh, it was just not a great shave. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to going to bring out the old Edwin Jagger today and, uh, and have a nice DE shave because I know a lot of you really like the DE shaves, but I'm going to continue on my trait razor journey. Need to learn to be proficient. And I'm not there yet, but I'm going to continue to work on it. And I'm really enjoying it. To me, it's definitely feeling more rewarding. But I enjoy DEs too. And I haven't given up on. And I'm not going to give up on. I will say this. The days of me buying really expensive double-edged razor might be over. Because if I had to make, make a decision between a really nice straight and a DE, I'd probably go with the straight. Um, that's just me. It's just what I prefer right now. It just feels more challenging, you know, if that makes any sense to you. Anyway, let's get a little moisture going there and we'll start our lathering with the Katie's Bubbles. We're using the West Coast Shaving. Uh, I think this one was called Beacon, maybe. Synthetic, not expensive. And as you can see, I don't have fibers going all over the place like that crazy uh, brush from... Um, Naked Armor, just absolutely, for my money, um, or for anybody's money, I'm just, I'm just going to say it, just absolutely bad, no question about. This feels better, and I'm not having fibers laying all over my face, which is really annoying. Let's get some more moisture in the mix here. Let's try to really mist pretty good there to get some water, water in here. Again, we're trying to trying to change our lather a little bit to make sure we're getting more hydration in it. Not required for this DE shave. I could do a pasty lather with this. It'd be just fine all day long, every day. But with straight razors, you just need a little more moisture and slickness. And again, I don't shoot for, a, I think what they're calling high structure and high density and so on. I just like a nice protective barrier on my face. Um, that works well for me in most situations. Although, like I said, um, the uh, the thing that I need to be cognizant of is adding more moisture. So, just trying to do that. But this will do just fine. There's no need to go 
any further than that, it will suit my purpose. And uh, what we're gonna to try to do is use the left hand here for the left side so I could just continue building dexterity with my left hand because, you know, with straight razor shaving, you use your left hand, or at least I do. And so I wanna get accustomed to, when I do use a DE, to using both hands, just so I can be um, accustomed to using it, quite frankly. And that feels great, by the way. Um, it's a very smooth shaver. And the feather blade for me is not the least bit threatening. I don't find it menacing in any way. And it works very well in this razor. It's a very good match for this razor based on that first use. It just felt really, really smooth. Sometimes the feather can feel rough for me, but I don't ever feel that it's threatening in terms of it's too sharp, like some people do. I just don't feel that way. Now you can disagree and some people do, <laughs> but uh, for me, it's just another blade. Uh, perhaps it's sharper. I don't know how you could prove that it's sharper. You know, I don't know any real objective way to measure that. Maybe somebody has, um, but I just think it's a, it's a nice sharp blade that sometimes for me feels a little rough. Uh, in this Edwin Jagger 316, it does not feel rough. It feels very, very smooth. In fact, I would say based on these two uses, it, the Edwin Jagger, the way this 316 is built for some reason, or at least this particular feather blade that I have that's in its third and final use, just feels very, very smooth. Um, and a lot of times, out of the box for me, they don't feel particularly smooth. So, you know, for whatever that is worth, um, let's get some little moisture going there and we'll just uh, pull some of that down. Move some of that over and just lay it on the face there. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing well. I was watching uh, uh, Jack from the Virtual Groom Room and Chief from the Shaving with the Chief. They were talking about luxury items and versus budget and so on. And I heard Jack explain it in a way that I can appreciate. He was talking about, you know, if you're if you're goal oriented in terms of you just want a great shave, you can use, you know, some of the stuff that I use, which is a very budget friendly, and you'll be perfectly happy. But some people, they like to enjoy the experience. And what that means is, I'll give you a perfect example. So I have an Edwin Jagger razor, the DE89. This one, I like better. It feels better, it looks better. Um, both actually do an okay job, as far as shaving goes. This one, which is, you know, probably three times more expensive, it gives you a better experience. You just feel better using it. It doesn't always necessarily provide for a better shave, but the experience, just the pride that you sort of have because you're using something that looks good. It feels good in the hand. It's got some weight to it. That adds to the experience, and, and that's what they're talking about when, when they're talking about experience. And that is very, for me with hardware, um, that is often, I agree, is that you can get a really nice razor for example, that Wade and Butcher that the Stallion sent me for general, for gentleman's use, the experience that you have while using that, knowing that it's, you know, dates back probably somewhere between 1440 and 1480. The experience, the handling, the scales, it makes you feel good. It, it lends itself to a really nice, happy experience, right? And I, I can get that with hardware. Like if you bought a really nice brush that's custom, and it looks good and it feels good in your hand. It's just giving you, you know, it's providing for a more luxurious experience. I don't typically get it with software, you know. And so that's for me where things tend to change. It's software for me doesn't, I don't usually have the same feeling except for one thing, scent. So I will gladly sometimes pay more for a soap that's a little more pricey if it has an absolutely phenomenal scent that I love and can't get elsewhere. But I'll also say that if I can get that soap, that particular scent at a less expensive price, a lot of times I would do it versus paying more because I don't really realize a lot of tangible benefits 
from spending more on software. Now, that said, my skin seems to default back to sort of a base level, generally one hour after the shave, almost no matter what I do. From time to time, from time to time, I will notice a little bit of difference. So if I use a soap that has a really good post, every now and then I'll notice. Like yesterday, I used that Kaizen, and because I used an aftershave that was non-alcohol, I could tell that my face felt pretty good. But generally speaking, every single day I'm using witch haze when I'm using an alcohol-based splash. Like one hour later, my, my face feels the same no matter what. So it doesn't matter whether I'm using Declaration or I'm using, you know, any relatively ex, uh, expensive shave soap. In other words, I'm not really noticing that much a difference whether I'm using a uh, $2.50 an ounce soap or a $5 an ounce soap. My skin sort of goes back to a default level, almost no matter what. And so for me, it does not make sense to spend five, six dollars per ounce on a soap if I can get the exact same scent in something that's less because my skin sort of behaves the same way. All right, now yours may be different. You may really notice a big difference in um, from one soap to, to another. Like some really makes your skin feel good and if that's so, then it might be worth for you. Your experience might be vastly different spending a lot more or so, mine is not. It tends to behave the same way almost under all conditions, except the only time I can really tell a difference is if I don't use an alcoholic base or an alcohol based aftershave and I have a really, a skin that has a lot of um, like heavy butters or milk based soaps like, you know, A&E or Declaration Grooming or some of the other some of the other uh, pricey soap makers that, what I call, they they include the uh, Super Emu, Unicorn Milk and all that. So if I didn't use any post products at all, I might notice it a little bit, but it's not huge. My face will largely, it's just it, it's just the way it behaves. And I say this having, having been doing this for quite some time, many, many years, my face pretty much goes back to a default level under almost all conditions. And so I don't realize a tangible and noticeable benefit from using very, very expensive soaps, which is why I have a lot of Sterling, for example. Now, it's a good quality soap. I find it, for me, it hits that perfect balance in price, usually in scent. They have a lot of good scents. They're not overly complex. Uh, something that a lot of times, quite frankly, I don't like some of these soaps that are really revered by a lot of people in scent. And they're like, you know, they've been made by some professional perfumer. Sometimes I don't like them. You know, they're, I feel like sometimes they, they, they're overly complex. They feel to, to my nose, the, the notes feel like they're clashing and not gelling. And so a soap like this that is not super complex, aquatic scent, sort of reminds you of Aquadigio, let's say. Beautiful. And so for me, this is perfect. And there's no quality problems here. So this is a, a soap that fits well in many people's budget. And I can promise you, an hour from now, my skin's gonna feel just fine, you know, regardless of what happens. And so for me, that's why I say on software, um, I don't really re recognize a lot of tangible benefits. I don't realize, I should say, a lot of tangible benefits. Now, you may differ, but if you're like me, um, there's really not a big need to spend money, to spend um, lots of money on, you know, expensive soaps, if you can get the same scent or a similar scent in, uh, at a, you know, less expensive price. Why is that important? I'm a variety shaver, so I use a lot of different products. And so I can get two sterling to one, um, 
one of the fancy soaps, let's say. And if the fancy soap doesn't do any more for my skin, which by and large they do not, again, just me, not necessarily you. I wanna make that very, very clear. So if I'm able to, to experience two scents that I'm probably gonna like, and that I know I'm likely to like, versus taking a flyer on one expensive one, it's a no-brainer for me. May not be for you. And so I really appreciate that conversation that Jack and the Chief started and I completely, what, what I would say was, I agree with them on hardware to a certain extent. Um, on razors, be it straight razors or DE, I definitely appreciate, now I'm wanting to stretch my face because <laughs> I'm, I'm used to straight razors now, but I can definitely appreciate and have a better experience with a razor like this, which looks better, feels better than a DE 89. Um, it's, it's a different design too, to be fair. But this is a nice razor, I'm enjoying it. And I love the way it looks. That lends itself to a better experience. Also with, with, with brushes to a certain extent, I think you can really overdo it on brushes though. I think with razors, lifetime investment. With brushes, maybe. But some of the knots are outrageous, the cost. And so I like synthetic knots, so there's no reason for me to pay hundreds of dollars for a brush. Because you can get a custom for you know a little over 100, let's say. And that would be as much as you would spend for synthetic. And so, point is, I I agree for the most part um, based on my use case with uh, Jack and the Chief. I completely recognize how luxury can lend itself to a better experience, particularly with razors, to a less extent with brushes, but I still understand it. With software for me, it's almost a no-go. Um, I just don't get that much out of um, five, six dollar plus per ounce soaps that, that, that this one, honestly, this shave is close. It smells great. I'm going to rinse and come back. We'll get into the post. My skin's going to feel great. And you know, right after the shave and an hour from now, it'll sort of be where it stays all the time. That's just my body chemistry. And so I was trying to, I, I hope this has been helpful to explain my process and why you won't necessarily see me you know, using a lot of five, six dollar an ounce soap. It just doesn't make sense for me to do so. Not for me, it may for you. Anyway, let me get to the post, we'll be right back. All right, we're back with our Lancaster towel. And here's probably another area that I'm enjoying a little bit of luxury. Again, for me, as long as no one comes in the restroom here and wipes their butt with this, this is probably a lifetime investment um, for me. Um, it's gonna last a long time. Or maybe not a lifetime investment, but many, many years. So at $15.99 or whatever it is, Yes, it's it's a lot more than an automotive towel, but I enjoy it because it's made for shaving. It's got the snap on it where you can hang it up. And so I can appreciate the luxury, you know, that this affords. And it is a little more than what you pay for, say, an automotive towel. But I appreciate it. I feel good using it. And I hope that, hope that makes sense. Let's uh, go to our last bit of witch hazel we have here. This is the Humphrey. I'm going to be back on the Thayer soon. I can't wait because I, I really prefer Thayer's, honestly. Um, the scent on this just for me isn't quite as good as uh, as Thayer's. That's just my opinion. I love Thayer's. Okay, so that was nice. Uh, let's talk about what we used. The Edwin Jagger 316. Uh, I love this razor. It's the second time I've used it. So take that with a grain of salt. Thanks so much, Jimmy, for sending it. It is still a mild razor, in my opinion, but it seems more aggressive than the regular Edwin Jagger DE89. Um, it feels good. This knurling actually feels quite good. It's got some weight uh, in the head, but it also seems to be a little weighty maybe down here on this knob. I can't really tell if that's stainless or not, but this razor is a really smooth shaver with the feather blade. That was incredibly smooth with the second run. I love this razor. Thank you, Jimmy. The Katie's Bubbles Le Marche du Rissage, um, terrific aqua scent. If you love aqua scents and you haven't tried this, give it a try because if you like, say, Aqua Digio, I think you will like this. Really, really nice. We use the West Coast Shave Beacon, 24 millimeter synthetic. Absolutely love it. Terrific. I'm gonna finish off today with some Katie's Bubbles LMR. Same thing as the soap, Le Marche du Rissage uh, aftershave. 
And this has been an enjoyable shave. And so we're just gonna slap this on and, and we're gonna smell great the entire day. And uh, this one has been very enjoyable. <laughs> so I hope you appreciate, um, you know, the conversation about luxury. I hope Jack and the Chief will, will watch this and just get my, you know, perspective. I do agree with them. Ultimately, luxury is up to you, whether you want to go down that road or not. If you're a budget shaver and you enjoy it, go go with it. If you're a luxury shaver and you enjoy it, go with it. Just don't crap on what other people do, you know. Don't frown at luxury people and don't frown at budget people. I think all of us could enjoy a little bit of both and probably have a very good experience because when you use things that aren't that expensive, like, you know, budget items, you'll appreciate your luxury items more, I think. That's just my opinion. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us once again. Until next time, I remind you, it's your shave, do it your way, and God bless.